Okay, I'm going to talk about required practical six, which is use of aseptic techniques to investigate the antimicrobial substances on microbial growth. And there's several elements to knowledge and understanding linked to this, which you could get assessed on. If you haven't yet done the required practical, um, please make sure you watch this video um, before continuing with this video. So first of all, what do we mean by aseptic techniques? You could be asked questions on this. So there's two reasons you carry out aseptic techniques. One, to protect yourself from uh, being contaminated with potential pathogens, which the microorganisms could be. So for example, a face mask or gloves. So disposable gloves. So they help to prevent you from uh, being ill or you've got goggles as well to protect the eyes. Another reason for aseptic techniques is to prevent contamination of your sample with other bacteria. You need to make sure that the results that you get are due to the bacteria that you want to grow and not due to another microorganism. So things like flaming at the neck of your bottle that's got your broth, things like flaming an inoculating loop um, or a spreader that you might use prevents contamination because it kills uh, bacteria that could be on the implement beforehand. You've also got an autoclave here so this um, adds heat to about 130 degrees and pressure so it's like a pressure cooker and it kills any bacteria um, and you use this for your agar before you use it in the practical for um, petri dishes to, to prevent any contamination from unwanted microorganisms. Another important technique is when using your petri dish, when here's a spreader, um, when using inoculating loop or a spreader to only open the, the lid as, as uh, little as possible. This prevents any microorganisms from entering and contaminating your sample. It is really important that you make sure you read the question. Um, sometimes a question could be asked and it's unsuitable uh, to say, for example, flame an inoculating loop because the method might be a pore plate, for example, which wouldn't be using an inoculating loop to add the bacteria, bacterial colonies. So you've got to make sure you read the question and choose the most appropriate aseptic techniques for that scenario. So there are two parts to require practical six. This part isn't included in the video that I asked you to watch earlier, which is about ant antibiotic discs. The second part to the required practical is uh, using serial dilution um, to work out the original number of colonies per centimetre cubed or per milliliter or per millimetre cubed in the original sample. So to do a serial dilution um, with, with this, you make a 10 times dilution each time. So you start off with your original sample and you add nine centimeters cubed of your original sample and one centimeters cubed of, of water. So that dilutes it by 10. So you've got a one in 10 solution. If you plated this out, you couldn't count the individual colonies because they're all merged together. There's far too many to count. So that will give inaccurate results. You can then dilute it by another 10, one centimeters cubed of the previous solution. Add it to this, mix it with water, Make sure you give it a good mix. Add nine centimeters cubed of water. Again, there's too many to count. Another 10 times dilution, one centimeter cubed of the previous uh, solution. Nine centimeters of water, give it a mix. Plate it out, still far too many colonies to count to get an accurate number. The next one, however, diluted by 10 times more. So we've got one in 10,000 10, dilution, or 10 to the minus four of the original concentration. You could actually count these colonies and it would give you an accurate number. You can accurately count 32 bacterial colonies. So in this example here, we counted 32 bacterial colonies, and we know that it's been diluted by 10,000 times. So 32 times 10,000 would give 320,000 bacteria per milliliter, per centimeter cubed, that would have been in the original sample. Okay, there seems to be an, an error copying across on to explain everything here uh, from the PowerPoint. These should be to the power of so 10 to the 7, 10 to the 14, 10 to the 21, and 10 to the 23. So these numbers are incredibly large. 
So bacteria, because they carry out binary fission, uh, the population doubles every generation. So you can see here the population is doubling. So one generation would be uh, 12 hours with this type of bacteria. That's actually incredibly fast. But these numbers are incredibly large. So we tend to um, log um, these numbers. If you do that in your calculator, please practice this going between the numbers. So you do your log 1.7 times 10 to the 7, that'll give you 7.2. To go the other way, you need to press the, the 10 to the x button. Um, so 10 to the x, 7.2, and it'll take you back to the original number. And that's something you do need to practice for questions and exams, being able to use those two numbers um, comfortably. So get used to using those buttons on the calculator. So this is a population growth curve. Um, for a sealed container, for, so like um, one of the broth bottles that have been inoculated in an earlier slide. So uh, over time, the you have the exponential phase where the population doubles every generation, so due to binary fission. There's plenty of uh, space, there's plenty of glucose, amino acids in the solution, um, so they can divide at the maximum rate. You then get to the sort of stable point where the population remains fairly constant. So the growth rate is equal to the death rate of the bacteria. And you get the death phase. So the bacteria producing too many toxins, maybe carbon dioxide from respiration or other biochemical waste products that kills the bacteria. They're also running out of things like glucose and amino acids. Um, so aren't dividing as rapidly either. But a key question, why do you use a log? So why do we log the number of cells? And if you think back to the numbers on the previous slide, the numbers would be far, the range, not just the numbers, but the range, the difference between the smallest and largest values would be far too large to plot on the same graph. So you couldn't plot 1.7 to this times 10 to the 7 and 5 times 10 to the 23 very easily on the same graph. Yet you could plot 7.2 and 23.7 quite easily on the same graph. The second part of the required practical is like what you saw in the video, so using antibiotic discs um, in an experiment, see how it affects the growth rate, of, growth of bacteria. So each of these has been um, soaked in a different antibiotic. So we've got amphicillin, vancomycin, and methicillin. So how does the antibiotic work? Well, it's going to kill the bacteria or prevent the bacteria from replicating. So before these antibiotic discs were added, a pore plate would have been generated. So you inoculate the bacterial broth with the agar before, and then you pour it in. So you've got bacteria um, present in throughout um, the agar. Then add your antibiotic discs and the, these bacteria have either been killed or they've been prevented from growing in these regions around the antibiotic discs. Usually antibiotics work either by killing the bacterial cells, like uh, preventing cell wall formation, so the cells burst due to osmosis, or it could inhibit um, cell division by an fission by inhibiting DNA replication, for example. So how does the, the bacteria around here being killed even though they're not touching the antibiotic disc. Well, the antibiotics diffuse out of the agar, uh, through the agar, out of the disc, so they can kill the bacteria that aren't just touching the antibiotic disc. Usually the more effective the antibiotic, the larger the clear zone. Uh, one thing you might want to think about for a control variable is the concentration should be the same for each of these. So if there's a greater concentration, one reason that this could have the largest clear zone, it could be the most effective antibiotic, or it could be due to the fact that the concentration of antibiotic was higher, so the larger difference in concentration, so it's going to diffuse further into the disc. So you've got to make sure that's the same uh, in an experiment.